mientras se encuentre encendido el cartel indicador, trabar las mesas rebatibles y colocar en posición vertical. On December 9th, 2019, I made myself at home on the vessel that would bring me as far south as it could go. It would be my home for the next 10 days en route to Antarctica. With average waves being eight meters high, we weren't able to leave the Beagle Channel just yet. But that didn't stop us from enjoying our time on board as we waited to depart. Let me introduce you these nice officers one by one. Don't you mind, please? Just over 24 hours later, the waves finally subsided, and I was off, headed south, towards Antarctica. And this is the place that we first gonna touch for, that is part of the Antarctica. Just after lunch on December 12th, we arrived at Barrientos Island. This was a small island in the South Shetlands, and it was home to lots and lots of nesting chinstrap and gentoo penguins. so amazing to see all those penguins in the wild for the first time and I was really happy to have a few hours to just walk around and take it all in. The expedition crew did an amazing job of making up for lost time. After an early dinner, we were able to make a second landing that first day, this time on Half Moon Island. It was another small island in the South Shetland Islands, and it was even more picturesque than the first. 
There were less penguins here than the first island, but there were still plenty of chinstrap penguins to see and so many beautiful views along the way. myself on the Antarctic Peninsula. It was full of sunshine, snow, and lots and lots of icebergs. We made our first landing that day on Culverville Island, a nesting spot for thousands and thousands of Gentoo penguins, and also a prime resting place for lots of icebergs which got stuck in the shallow bay. I climbed up the steep slopes of the island for a gorgeous view at the top and took lots and lots of photos. That day, we were blessed with perfect weather, and this, this view, these penguins, all the icebergs, this is what I had dreamed about when I decided to go to Antarctica. After lunch, the next stop was Nico Harbor. We weren't landing on an island this time. This was the first time I set foot on the actual peninsula of Antarctica. This night was a night I had really been looking forward to. It was time to go camping outside in Antarctica. I didn't get much sleep that night and it never actually got dark. A lot of the other passengers thought we were crazy, but there was something amazing about digging a hole in the snow, bundling up in three layers of sleeping bags, managing to keep warm and listening to glaciers crack and fall off into the water below throughout the night that was so worth it. December 14th, our first stop was Useful Island. This was a small island off the Antarctic Peninsula that boats used to use to help them navigate, which explains why they called it Useful. This was the first place that I saw Weddell seals, and the island also had a beautiful 360 view at the top.
That same afternoon, we were supposed to land in Orne Harbor, another peninsula landing site, but unfortunately there was too much ice to get to shore. Instead, we all hopped in the Zodiacs and cruised around the harbor itself. Here, I saw lots of humpback whales. They came so close to the Zodiac that I really got a feel for just how humongous they are, yet so gentle at the same time. On December 15th, we were supposed to head even further south and land at one of the British research stations. Unfortunately, there was too much ice for our little boat to get through, so the expedition crew came up with another idea. We would head north and make our way around the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula. We had planned two landings along the way, but when we got to the first one, the seas were just too rough to get off the boat. We continued heading around the peninsula until we came to Brown Bluff. This time, we could make land fall. Brown Bluff ended up being one of my favorite landing sites in Antarctica. There were so many Adelie penguins there, and lots of them had chicks which had hatched just days before. Adelie penguins are only found in Antarctica, and their personalities are so entertaining, and it makes them really interesting to watch.
Since we'd missed our first landing site that day, we had some extra time to play with. The expedition team decided to head even further out into the Weddell Sea on the eastern side of the peninsula. Here we saw the largest iceberg on the planet. On our last morning, we sailed through Neptune's bellows into Deception Island. This island is a flooded caldera of a still active volcano, where tidal pools off the shoreline can actually cook krill and cause steam to blow across the beach. The last stop of the expedition was at Elephant Point. Here there are lots and lots of elephant seals and pups, and we were able to take a hike and climb on an ice cap. I spent my last hour here just watching these guys on shore, just taking in the moment and enjoying my last few minutes of Antarctica. I wouldn't hesitate to say this is the best trip that I've ever taken, and I hope someday that I'll be back.